Most of our privacy is lost through our phones. On the news last night, it was confirmed that Google was tracking everyone's locations and using it to map if people are doing social distancing and then sharing that data with the government. I already warned about Google's capability to track the majority of humans in the world so many times. Fortunately, two devices cannot be tracked by Google or Apple. These are Linux phones and the Googled Android AOSP. Both of these are excellent choices for privacy while maintaining some sort of functionality in the modern world. But they offer privacy in two completely different ways. So you have to understand how they work so you can plan out which device to use. Let's discuss this next. I just have to lay out the foundation first. If you're using an iOS device or if you have a regular Android phone, then clearly you have no privacy. Most of the spying and surveillance on our lives are done on these phones. And that's probably 99% of all the phones out there. You can watch the video, Who's Spying on Your Phone, to understand the mechanics of what I'm talking about. And I've done videos on the alternatives. There are two alternatives. One is to use a Linux phone and the other is to use Android AOSP, Android Open Source Project, which is the open source version of Android with no Google apps. And I call that a de-Googled phone. These two options are great. They protect you, but the approach of each is different. First, let's talk about Linux phones and why they're fantastic. When I say Linux phones, the most popular daily driver way to do this is to use a Nexus 5 and then load Ubuntu Touch on it. Ubuntu Touch works well on a Nexus 5 and is very stable. There is no doubt that this is the safest phone available to anyone because the phone has no connection to Google whatsoever. There's no telemetry, location collection, or even any sort of identification or device fingerprint that can be taken by Google, Apple, Facebook, or anyone else. The only entities that can track the phone are your carrier and a government, but even that can be temporarily shut down by removing the SIM card. Or if you have a Pine phone and a Librem 5, by turning off the cell modem switch. Hands down, this is the absolute best privacy choice. You can control precisely when location is enabled and the location tracking isn't super accurate, which is perfect. In fact, it will likely fail when indoors, even if you leave location tracking on. And it still works well enough outdoors for navigation. So if this is the case, we should all jump into a Linux phone since it's perfect. Well, it's not perfect. At the moment, the most stable option and easiest to get is a Nexus 5 with Ubuntu Touch, which by the way, I have available on my store. But it has issues if you're used to a newer phone. First, it is slower. This is a 2013, 2014 phone, so it's seven years old, six to seven years old. This means that the camera isn't as good as a modern phone. And usually there's a limited amount of space on the phone. The main negative is that if you're used to using certain apps, there are a lot of limitations. You can only use apps available on Linux phones. And since a Linux phone is a new thing, most Linux apps don't work on mobile. For some of us, we need access to popular apps. But if you use a regular Android, then Google will know everything you're doing. Fortunately, there's a way around this. If you have a de-Googled phone like the one I sell, which is a Motorola Moto G7, it doesn't have anything Google on it. The software that Google uses to track you is not there. The only code that is in a de-Googled phone is open source by default. So there can't be any tricks there since we can look at the source code and identify the trick. But it doesn't stop there. You get a de-Google phone and you start loading standard apps on there like Waze, Yelp, Uber, and then you're back to being tracked by Google. All apps sold on the Google Play Store connect to Google in order to use 
notifications, and some app utilization statistics, database capabilities, and so on. Now, you will say that a de-Google phone is not safe, since it actually still connects to Google. Actually, this is a different privacy approach on a de-Google phone. You see, a de-Google phone has no identity. On a standard Android phone, you have your Google ID. A de-Google phone is set to have a spoofed Google ID, so it is never you. You never have to identify the phone. So even if apps send information to the Firebase servers of Google, they don't have your real identity. Yes, they can get a device fingerprint and will know what apps are loaded from Google Play, but they will not know your Android app. They will not be able to attach it to your financial records. And the biggest plus, the Wi-Fi scanning, and that is the one used to track everyone in the world, is disabled. Let me compare the Linux approach versus the de approach again so it's clear to you. Number one, a Linux phone provides privacy by withholding information from Google. Two, a de-Google phone that uses regular apps achieves privacy by disinformation. Two different approaches. This is a very important difference and it really is applicable to many things we do on the internet. Do you attack the privacy problem by withholding the data? You can do this in an absolute way by not having a phone, moving off the grid, and disconnecting from the internet. Instead of doing that, many of us want to utilize the internet, so we use Tor and VPNs. These tools create disinformation. Your data is still flowing through the internet, but these tools obscure the IP address, which is the direct identification on you, plus your traffic is mixed in with other people. When using a normal, unsafe modern phone like iOS or Android, then you will be sending information on your phone, which is the Apple ID, the Google ID, and a device fingerprint, so the two matches. So those apps can correlate your activities across all apps. But when you use a Linux phone, none of that fingerprinting can occur since Linux doesn't even grant access to that kind of detail. And of course, there's no login whatsoever that is revealed to a third party or to any centralized authority. A Linux phone has no mothership company, so no one has access to the data on the phone. It's amazing, actually. A de-Google phone does occasionally connect to the Google mothership, but it's sending the wrong name all the time, and the wrong name is used on thousands of phones, so you're actually anonymized completely. And the most feared element of a standard Android is the feature that they use to track where everyone is, which is called Wi-Fi scanning. This feature scans the networks for Wi-Fi routers and then reports the Wi-Fi router MAC addresses to Google together with a GPS position. This feature is not part of location services. It's an independent feature on Google Android. Well, this code does not exist on Android open source probably because Google doesn't want to share that proprietary code with anyone since it is one of the keystones of the Google spying network. Now, how does a de-Google phone work to protect your privacy? First, since there's no Google Play, there's no actual direct code from Google on the phone. All the apps from Google cannot even be installed. This includes even a YouTube app or a Gmail app. Second, a fake app store is installed and it has a built-in spoofer. It actually redirects your request to go to the Google Play Store, but it is done indirectly so you receive the same app, but not connecting directly from Google Play to your phone. Then the apps will communicate to Google for notifications, payments, and other back-end services like databases. On a de-Google phone, there's a middleware software that acts like Google. It intercepts the calls to Google and then passes it on to Google, but without your phone's identity. There is really a great sense of freedom when it works like this. And on a de-Google phone, you have the option to stick to apps from F-Droid, which is an open source store. So everything there is safe to begin with. 
The identity spoofing is only necessary when you're using apps that are standard apps in Google Play, like Waze, Uber, BNB, Yelp, Facebook, Twitter, Signal, Telegram, and so on. If you can avoid using those apps, then you would hold information completely. If you use those apps, then you're sending disinformation. So, which is the better approach? Withhold information or send disinformation? Remember those two points. I think that each has a purpose and obviously what holds the information is inconvenient. In my case, I choose both options. I have a Linux phone with a bunch to touch. In fact, I have several. I have a Nexus 5 running a bunch to touch and I also have a Pine phone which can run a bunch to touch and Debian Fosh, which is my other favorite. Then I have another phone which is a Motorola Moto G7 Play which I loaded with my custom AOSP ROM, I have never signed into it, so it has no idea of my actual Google ID. By the way, I offer both these phone choices on my store on Braxme. The store link is in the description. You can obviously make these phones yourself if you have the technical knowledge, but I sell them pre-made if you don't want to spend the time, which can be a lot of time, even if you have tech knowledge. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about subscribing to this channel and hitting that notification bell. Slam on it. Thank you for watching.